Think about your life right now. What do you want? What do you desire? What are you doing to get these things? Think for a second now about why you want these things. Does your favorite celebrity or influencer have it? Did you see it in a commercial? Will owning this thing make people like and accept you? And now picture something else. Imagine one day that virtually all of the stuff you own was taken from you. Your Xbox, your wallet, your car, your furniture, your clothes, your TV. How would you react? How would you feel? For 99% of people, having basically all of your possessions taken from you might constitute rock bottom. But for the rare 1%, this might just be the most beautiful place on earth. A blessing even. Let's explore. Fight Club is a film which explores this notion of rock bottom. And a big takeaway from the film is that rock bottom is subjective. For the narrator and Tyler, rock bottom means completely different things and evokes very different emotions. For the narrator, rock bottom is a depressing and abysmal state. For Tyler, rock bottom is beautiful, liberating, and baptismal. The narrator thinks he has hit rock bottom when his condo is torched, and with it, all of his belongings. He loses everything he worked for. I had a stair that was very decent, a wardrobe that was getting very respectable. I was close to being complete. Shit, man, now it's all gone. For Tyler, the narrator was already at rock bottom prior to his condo burning down, working a corporate job he hated, living pathetically in his condo, which was filled with stuff he didn't need, exploiting terminally ill support groups just to feel something. Tyler might be right. What's more rock bottom than boarding flights and hoping for the plane to crash? And we know for a fact that the narrator's prior life was his true rock bottom because Tyler himself is a byproduct of that rock bottom. Tyler accurately points out that many modern, Western, consumer-minded people, like our narrator, are unknowingly existing while at rock bottom, and they've been conditioned to accept it. According to Tyler, we've been conditioned to want material things and comforts, things which Tyler correctly points out are irrelevant and even contradict our true nature. Why do guys like you and I know what a tefe is? Is this essential to our survival in the hunter-gatherer sense of the word? So this begs the question, what is our true nature? What do we really want and crave? What is Tyler Durden's philosophy? Tyler's entire philosophy centers around eliminating that conditioning. Why do you think I blew up your condo? Eradicating the consumer's conditioning that motivates us to earn as much money as we can and chase the modern image of success. Tyler believes this conditioning is extremely detrimental. It's the prime motivator for how and why we live our lives. And for many people, that means... Working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. Tyler knows that this conditioning ultimately leaves us empty. And the probability of us actually achieving this modern image of success is minuscule. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. Now, Tyler believes to truly rid ourselves of this detrimental consumerist mentality, we should own and desire nothing. And what better way to own nothing than to burn down everything we have? Tyler arson the narrator's condo and possessions, a predicament which brought the narrator to what he thought was rock bottom. Tyler was simply teaching our deranged narrator to truly let go of possessions and control, a predicament which Tyler believes it's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything, will ultimately and truly set him free. I.e. for Tyler, what many people perceive as rock bottom, losing our possessions, is actually a beautiful place and the start to an enlightened journey. So how are we better off without possessions? Let's dig deeper into Tyler's philosophy. Tyler points out that having nothing doesn't mean you own nothing. It means nothing owns you. The things you own end up owning you. This makes a lot of sense. Take a car, for example. 
Let's say you buy a fancy sports car. You don't want it to get scratched, so you polish it. You wash it every weekend. When people climb in, you say, be careful. You especially don't let people eat inside it. You might even get upset with people who disrespect your rules about it. When your stuff, the things you own, like a car, makes you change your behavior towards people or in general, then that thing owns you. And of course, it also owns you financially. You have to pay insurance, gas, maintenance, maybe it's leased. Now it costs you even more money. Now moving on, a big part of Tyler's philosophy is letting go of control. In a life filled with randomness, luck, and chance, Westerners have a desire to assert control. But according to Tyler, by detaching from consumerism and fully comprehending that we can't control everything, we may begin to experience life as it's meant to be lived. We may begin to reconnect with our true nature and what the human animal truly craves. Not stereos, clothes, or sofas. No. What human beings truly crave above all else is community. To know that we are not alone. This is why our narrator finds comfort in these microcosmic communities, his support groups. Our narrator was struggling because he had no real community. Do you have somebody you can call? So, when he was finally free from his possessions, he and Tyler wasted no time creating the ultimate community. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. And Tyler's not wrong. This desire for community is true. According to a guy named Maslow, in his renowned hierarchy of needs, once our basic needs are taken care of, the human being craves, above all else, belonging and mattering. Tyler knows the modern Western world, as it stands, discourages community and unity. In the Western world, we're divided, and division is fostered by human constructs, like how much money you have, or your race, or your political ideology. We build fences to keep others away. Interacting with strangers is frowned upon. Even the nuclear family isn't as strong as it once was. The family community. Fathers bail. If our fathers bail, what does that tell you about God? <laughs> Divorce is common. Single parents can marry the government who will provide for them. And at the end of all of this, we have no tribe, no community. A void that we have been conditioned to believe we can fill with possessions. But though we may have and acquire some possessions, we are empty and alone, like our narrator. We are a house filled with condiments, but no food. How embarrassing. A house full of condiments and no food. And what those in charge don't want us to realize, and what Tyler realizes, is that with community, anything is possible. There is power in being actively involved in a community, where we feel like a tight-knit tribe, where we're all equal, and we're all contributing in our own unique way to reach our tribe's collective goals. And for Tyler, it's only when everyone is reduced to rock bottom and rid of this consumerist ideology that we can rediscover our longing for community. That's why Tyler plans to destroy the buildings that contain credit card records so he can erase debt and restore a financial equilibrium where everyone starts at zero or rock bottom, where everyone is equal. If there's one thing we can learn from Tyler, it's that it may be time to reconsider your priorities. Let go of your possessions and desire to control. Realize that you may be at rock bottom without even knowing it. And if you are at rock bottom, don't sweat it. There's beauty in rock bottom. And the only place to go is up. On that note, let's end today's video with a powerful quote. Rock bottom is the foundation for which I rebuilt my life. Thanks for watching. For more videos, be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you next time.